Shut up and sit down. Hey everybody, welcome to another amazing episode of the Corporate Gamer Podcast. I'm your host, the Grandmaster of all Grandmasters, Corporate Gamer. This is episode 12, recorded on May 24th, 2017, Frame Rates in Video Games. I hope that everybody had a great week. I know that I did. Um, I know this is being recorded uh, less than a week after my last podcast. Um, I had a few days off last week, so I got to enjoy that, and it was a long weekend here in Canada. Um, Depending on where you are, it was either Victoria Day or Patriots Day in Quebec. I don't know why. It's just the way it is. Um, In that time, I actually uh, played a few video games, but I also managed to go watch a movie that I was... uh, I really wanted to go see uh, called Bon Cup Bad Cop 2. Um, This is a movie starring um, Patrick Curial, which is a Canadian... uh, a Quebec uh, French comedian. And Colm Fiore, which is a, um, an actor, an English actor, uh, Canadian. Um, so, essentially, this uh, this is the second uh, movie of Mocha Bad Cop. The first one was kind of a kind of a buddy cop, and this one's uh, s- similar fashion. So, basically, you have the... It's kind of like a Quebec version, I guess, of Lethal Weapon, but with a lot more comedy. So you have this rough, tough cop that talks shit all the time to, you know, um, to, to criminals and does it his own way. And you have another guy uh, played by Confiori, Martin Ward, which is the straight cop and, and so on. So that was in the first one. In the second one, uh, they haven't seen each other in a while. And um, essentially, uh, one, uh, Martin Ward, which is Confiori, he works for the RCMP. And you have Patrick Hural, who plays the character of David Bouchard. Um, he plays uh, a cop that works for the Sûreté du Québec, which is the provincial pro- police in Quebec. And essentially, the main idea, the main storyline, is that they're trying to um, stop a car theft ring um, uh, in Quebec that leads to something bigger, more sinister that can lead to te- lead to terrorist attacks. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. It was a really entertaining movie. Um, I enjoyed it. It runs roughly around two hours, uh, but it's really, really awesome. I really like the humor. I like how, uh, the comedians play off each other. Um, really, really cool. Um, I like the supporting cast as well. Most of it is not memorable, but there is one, uh, particular, Comedian, uh, she's a French comedian, Mariana Maza. Um, she's a swearing, toting stand up comedian, not conventional in any way. Uh, and she plays her part of like the hacker, I guess, or a computer savvy person uh, to a T. And uh, yeah, it was really enjoyable. Um, the story was really, really cool. And um, I would go watch it again personally. Um, I know that Bon Cup Bad Cop 1 was not everybody's cup of tea. But I think that there's a bit of everything in this movie that could keep it entertaining for everyone. Especially if you understand a bit of French. Um, I think it's really, really entertaining. Um, So I would encourage anybody to go see it. Let me know what you think. Um, There's a review up on uh, on aroundtable.ca. So let us know what you think about the movie if you want to see it. Uh, Today, actually, it's not part of what I did last week. But um, I actually heard and I had to talk about it. Essentially, it's uh, the movie Spaceballs 2. Um, Mel Brooks is actually thinking of bringing it back, and it seems that there's uh, quite a bit of uh, buzz around it, and it seems that they're looking uh, very seriously at creating a second one to the the movie. Um, Essentially, um, so if you guys don't know what the first movie is about, um, I have the synopsis here somewhere. There we go. So, the actual synopsis of it, or the idea of it, of Spaceballs, is the evil leaders of planet Spaceball, having foolishly squandered their precious atmosphere, devise a secret plan to take, to take every breath of air away from their peace-loving neighbor, planet Drud- Druidia. They send the evil Dark Helmet to kidnap Princess Vespa on the day of their wedding, 
in hopes of holding Dridia to ransom. But the princess skips town and joins forces with mercenary named Lone Star and his sidekick Barf. Um, it was a pretty star-studied uh, star whatever. I don't know why I can't talk today. Um, so basically it was a pretty nice cast. Let's put it that way. Uh, it was star the original star uh, starred Mel Brooks, John Candy, Rick Moranis, which played an amazing um, um, uh, what's it? Dark Helmet, which is a good t it's a take on on um, Dark Vader. Uh, Bill Pullman, um, Joan Rivers, Dick Van Patten. Um, unfortunately, most of those actors have passed on. But I'm hoping that they can cast uh, with just as many lovable characters as they did in the original. Um, since it's being headed by head, well, written by Mel Brooks, ideally, um, it may be, uh, it may, it may have some promise. If it'd be somebody else, I'd be like, meh. But you know, um, I think it's safe to say that it would at least be somewhat entertaining. Um, the tentative new name for this is Spaceballs Two. The search for more money, um, which is pretty, pretty funny, but uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited for this. I'm hoping that it does pan out. And right now, it seems to be just in talks, but MGM seems to be pretty serious about the movie, so I really hope that uh, this one gets made. So that's it. Uh, what did I play this week? Um, didn't play a whole lot, but I did play Star Wars: The Complete Saga again. Um, I started getting back into it last week when um, it was free a free download and it still holds up. I played the ori I originally played this on the PS3. Um, it was one of the few games that I actually owned on my PS3, and I think that it did re uh, it, it played really well and I still enjoy it. I like the humor of it. I like the story. Like the story follows pretty much the movies, but I like the the humor in it. It's a lot more lighthearted than. Um, than more serious Star Wars games, so it's really cool, and it's the Lego series. You can pick any Lego game pretty much and have a blast by playing it. So that's what I've been playing for the last week. Um, haven't really played anything else. Nothing really much on my iPhone or anything else. I'm hoping to maybe to buy Prey in the next week or two. Um, maybe I'll see. Um, maybe I'll wait uh, till the price goes down, but. Uh, so far, um, I'm having fun with this game, and I'm going to continue playing it. So that's it. All right, so down to the news of the week. Um, all right, so, shocker. Destiny 2 Dev says, no plans for Nintendo Switch port. So basically, um, this is for GameSpot. Uh, I got the story from GameSpot. So essentially, it's saying that Project lead Mark Noseworthy stated that the developer isn't working on a port and doesn't think that the game would work on Switch. Um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on, but you know, a lot of people were disappointed about the 30 frames versus 60 frames per second, um, and everybody was up in arms. That's not even a discussion on the Switch. Um, I mean, I'm pretty sure if they put effort in developing it for the Switch, I'm sure that you know it'd be nice. But I think they're going. Um, the fact that they don't have to be on older platforms, I think they're they're trying to go a little bit more free. And at least the PC game, I think, is going to be 60 frames. But the console games, as far as I can tell, will probably be 30. It's a bit up in the air. There's a there's a ambiguity somewhere in there. Uh, they weren't very clear on that, but it seems to be that you know, the the common denominator is 30 frames per second. So, and it looks, from what I saw from the gameplay, it looks really, really nice. So I'm not surprised that it's not going on the Switch. But, uh, yeah, so that there's not much more news here. Um, it's basically just saying, essentially, that Destiny 2 is dead in the water if you have a Switch. Uh, so another, going to another Destiny 2 um, story. I guess this was a Destiny 2 week, I guess. Um... Uh, Apparently, PC gamers will be waiting a little bit more, um, a little bit longer for the uh, PC version. Um, I got this from uh, Ars Technica. Um, so basically, 
the first paragraph is Activision has been shouting from the rooftops for months now that Destiny 2 will be available starting September 8th. Now, the publisher has clarified that the release date only applies to the console version of the game. PC users will likely have to wait a little longer to play the highly anticipated massively multiplayer shooter. So, PC is probably going to have to wait. Um, why? Um, basically, they're saying that they're not committed to PC date. Either they're trying to see if they can get all the bugs out in the console one so that they can port it to the PC. Um, I, you know, it's very ambiguity, ambiguous what uh, what they're trying to, to do uh, and why there's a delay. But, um, um, yeah, so uh, if you're, I guess if you have a PC, you'll have to be a little bit more patient. Um, I'll link to the article uh, in the show notes uh, down. It's actually explaining a little bit more in detail why, uh, not really why, but it kind of, they give a half-assed reason why. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's still, a PC is still going to be, a PC version is probably going to be late. There's going to be a day one patch like every other game. Um, same thing on console. Um, it's not, a, it doesn't say that in the article, but I mean, Every other AAA game pretty much now has a day one patch. So, uh, yeah, so PC gamers uh, PC gamers wanting to play Destiny 2 will have to wait a little longer. All right, next on the list, April video game sales. So, um, on GameSpot, they actually had an article, and I was curious. Usually, I don't look at these, but um, basically, the top... 10 games in terms of sales, uh, April 2017. Um, they don't actually say what the uh, the selling uh, the, the sales numbers are, but um, they probably have it somewhere. So they actually classify it by... Um, so the top games in general, the PC, PS4 games, Nintendo Switch, portable titles, tw- 2017 top games... And yeah, and Xbox One as as well. Um, So let's start. Uh, April 2017, top 10 games. So in the top 10, starting with number 10, Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Number 9 is Overwatch. Number 8, NBA 2K17. Not surprised. Number 7, Mass Effect Andromeda, which is number 7th. I would expect it, I would have expected it to be higher. But then again, because of the fallout and negativity, I don't even think it's going to be on the list next month, if anything. Number six, Grand Theft Auto V, which is amazing that it's still on the top 10 list of anything after so many years being released. I think they've sold close to 85 million, I believe, which is pretty impressive. Um, Number five, Ghost Recon Wildlands. MLB The Show 17. I'm surprised that's so high, but... Uh, number three is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number two is Persona 5. And number one is Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So a lot of people that are saying, the Switch doesn't sell games and blah, 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 blah. Well, you know what? If you have that perception that they don't have a lot of games, um, that may be true. But at the same time, their games are on, you know, two of the top three games is a Switch exclusive. So they're Nintendo games. And Mario Kart 8, which is even worse, is also available on the Wii U. So this is kind of like a redux or uh, updated version for the Switch. Um, So people that have the Switch, I guess, uh, really wanted to play Mario Kart, which is a party game, obviously. And uh, Legend of Zelda, everybody that's been playing it have said that it's the, you know, it gives them a video game orgasm. So um, I guess they're... It's still going to be selling, and I think it's going to be up there for quite a while. Uh, PS4 games. So now we're getting into more precise uh, consoles. So April 2017, PS4, top 10. Number 10 is Overwatch. Number 9, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Number 8, NBA 17. Uh, Number 7, Mass Effect Andromeda. Number 6, Kingdom Hearts HD 1.5 plus 2.5 Remix. Number 5, Grand Theft Auto. Number 4, Horizon Zero Dawn. That's a, that's a good placement for that. I, maybe I thought it would have been a little higher. Number three, Ghost Recon Wildlands. 
Number two, MLB The Show, which is very high. But then again, sports games are usually console, heavily you know sold on consoles. And I'm just surprised it's that high. It's not a FIFA. It's not a football. And number one is Persona 5. Um, top Nintendo Switch games. So number nine, you have Skylanders Imaginators. Number eight, Just Dance 2017. Uh, number seven, Binding of Isaac Afterbirth Plus. Number six, Super Bomberman R. Number five, Puyo Puyo Tetris. Number four, One Two Switch. Number three, Lego City Undercover. Number two, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. And number one, as you probably would have guessed, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uh, portable titles... Should I go through them? Uh, sorry, Xbox One. So I have to go through Xbox One first. So Xbox One, you have number 10, For Honor. Number 9, Rainbow Six Siege. Number 8, Lego Worlds. Number 7, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Number 6, NBA 17. Number 5, Forza Horizon 3. Number 4, Overwatch. Number 3, Grand Theft Auto 5. Number 2, Mass Effect And Andromeda. And number 1, Ghost Recon Ra Wildlands. Most of them are on most lists. The only one that's probably not there is Forza Horizon 3 because it's an exclusive. And Rainbow Six Siege as well. Uh, it's not exclusive, but it's on this list. Um, so I did Nintendo Switch. Uh, so the top games of the last year. So year to date. So from January 1st till today. Number 10 is MLB 17 The Show. Number 9, Call of Duty Infinite Warfare. Number 8, NBA 2K17. Number 7, Grand Theft Auto 5. Number 6, Resident Evil 7, which apparently everybody liked. It's, I think, a sleeper hit. <coughs> Number 5, Mass Effect Andromeda. Number 4, Horizon Zero Dawn. Number 3, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Number 2, For Honor. And number 1, Ghost Recon Wildlands. I don't know how many people are still playing For Honor. Um, I guess there there must be, but um, yeah. Um, so those are your games. The majority of the games, I think, they're pretty mainstream. There's nothing, no surprises out there. Grand Theft Auto, for me, is a surprise that it's still on most lists and it's still selling to this day. Um, NBA 17. Um, I'm surprised, actually, Mario Kart 8 is being sold so well. I did expect it to be on lists, but I didn't expect it to be that high on the on Switch uh, sales chart. And so there you go, you have it. Um, I'm gonna also give you uh, this in the um, in the link uh, in the show notes below, and you guys can check it out for yourselves. How many of these have you actually played? Um, anything that's a Switch, I haven't played. I haven't played any baseball games. I did watch NBA 2K17. It looks pretty cool. Um, but then again, it's a realistic game like every other EA Sports game. Uh, Black Ops 2 is really looks really good. Um, one that I really would like to try at one point um, is uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. That I would really like to play. Um, so maybe I'll play that eventually. Um, so that's it. So top 10 setting, selling games uh, on all consoles and individual. All right, next on the list, Red Dead Redemption 2 is now coming spring 2018. So uh, it's been pushed back. So initially, I think it was supposed to be end of 2017 or close to that. Uh, so now Red Dead Redemption 2 has now been sent to launch spring 2018 on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Um, so basically... Um, they're pretty much saying that we'd rather just have a polished game and have something ready um, and we'd rather push it. I'm, pers I'm personally okay with it. Um, if it means that the game is going to be more polished, um, I'm fully okay with it. Um, you know, when they pushed the last game that I, I know that uh, I really loved and they pushed was uh, Deus Ex, Human um, Mankind Divided. Uh, they had pushed it. It was supposed to be for a February release, and it got released, I believe, in August. And uh, yeah, it, it you know it was fine. Um, I really liked it, and um, this will probably be the same thing. From everything that I saw, it looks amazing. Um, just it's 
sucks for for fans that were really looking forward to to playing this earlier but i think that um uh, rockstar is going to be doing a, a good job on this one so red dead redemption 2 is has been delayed next on the list um i just saw this today actually um so xbox game pass launches june 1st with 100 plus games Early access for gold members starts today. So on the Major Nelson website, um, it was announced that uh, Xbox Game Pass, which is essentially what was announced last year, I mentioned it before, it's kind of the Netflix of video games, um, is going to be available. Uh, you're going to have 100 Xbox One and backward compatible Xbox 360 games for $9.99 USD per month. I'm assuming around 12 or 13 bucks Canadian. Um, so basically it's just going to be an online way of playing. Um, so basically what's amazing about this is that there, you have a two week trial for anybody that has a gold membership, which pretty much is, I'm pretty sure is almost everybody on an Xbox machine has Xbox live, unless you're still playing on the original Xbox, <laughs> which even then. Um, so basically, um, beginning today, May 24th, all Xbox Live Gold members will get exclusive early access to Xbox Game Pass and can start their 14-day free trial before anyone else. This is our way of saying thank you to our valued Gold members for their continued support. So you can play as of today. Um, and uh, yeah, you can have a two-week trial period before you're going to have to start paying. That's pretty exciting. I don't have the full list in front of me of what's going to be uh, available, um, but I don't know if they have anything available on the website. Uh, no, it doesn't really say much. So yeah, it doesn't really say much in terms of the whole list of games. I'm sure I could find it somewhere, um, but yeah. Um, so get your uh, free trial now. You have a chance. May 24th, so by the time you hear this, probably May 25th, um, you'll have two weeks in order to, to get that going. Uh, that's it for the news of the week. Um, so we have, that was it for the news. Uh, so now we have the talking point of the week. And I alluded it to a, a little bit before where the, um, the there was a big, uproar online uh, between PC and console games and how it should go to 50 uh, you know to you know is it should it be 30 ga uh, frames per second should it be 60 uh, should it be 30 should it be 60 frames per second depending on the machine so destiny uh, went on stage and said that destiny itself, could run at a 60 frames per second, uh, 4K native or somewhat native resolution. Um, however, uh, the PS the PS4 Pro will not be supporting this. Um, cannot support 60 frames per second, and it's uh, due, to, I think, to the GPU. I believe. Um, I think that's what they were saying. Um, so a lot of console. No, a lot of fanboys on the Xbox side were like, we want 60 frames per second. The Scorpio could handle it. Um, so in theory, yes, that's true. Um, and the PC will definitely have 60 frames per second. But, you know, for the average consumer, the average player, what does that actually mean? So a lot of times... 30 frames so basically when you're watching so let's put this in context so when you're watching a movie in general terms uh when you're watching a frame it's a roughly about or watching a movie per second you have about 24 frames so 24 frames per second when you get to video games uh in general it used to be 30 frames per second and now for the last little while um, it's been 60 frames per second. So basically for every, um, so at 60 frames per second, it takes 16.6 .6 milliseconds to display the next frame. 
whereas at 30 frames per second, it takes 33.3. What does it usually mean? So 60 frames per second takes more processing power. So you're losing in terms of the visual beauty, I guess, of the video game. And you're taking it to the processing power, which makes it look f more fluid. And it's hard to say it on, on a video, uh, on an on a audio podcast. Um, but when you're looking at a video, it actually, you do see a notable, noticeable difference. Um, most platformers um, are at 60 frames per second. Um, because it doesn't really take any, the, the graphics don't take so much out of the console that you need it. So usually it can run on that. More uh, beautiful games usually run at 30 frames per second for the visual beauty. And they want to, the, the emphasis is more on the look uh, of, the, of the game. So you'll notice, it, you know, for the average gamer, I don't think they'll care. Unless you actually see a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, obviously, there's less strain on the, on the eyes. But I don't think the average person is actually going to be noticing what is happening. Um, the difference between both. They're not. Um, only when you see it for the first time, you're like, oh my god. But, I mean, does it really take away from the gameplay? I don't think it does personally. I mean, I'm sure that having Destiny play at 60 frames per second would look a lot smoother, would play a lot smoother. But I mean, if the game is good, people will play it no matter what. Now, people were up in arms about they they should it should play on Xbox blah 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 because recently a lot of I'll be honest, a lot of Xbox One fanboys feel are feeling neglected, I guess, because there's not enough exclusives, there's not enough announcements, there's not enough. Uh, all the marketing deals are pretty much made by um, by PlayStation. I get that, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't do anything. Um, I'll play the games no matter what, sixty frames. I don't care. You can give me eight pick, you know, eight bit graphics. I really don't care. Um, I always said, no matter what it is, if you have the games, even you don't have the most powerful console, if you have the games, people will come and see it, and will play it. Look at the Switch. People are buying it. People are buying Breath of the Wild. Um. And it's not the most powerful machine, but people are buying the games. So it's just a matter of, you know, I think the average person really wouldn't care. Um, I think it's just eventually it will be the standard like everything else when the technology catches up. I think now we're in the trans transition period where you're in the middle. The, you know, people have to remember as well, they're up in arms but they haven't seen the Scorpio yet. We we had we heard about the specs and so on and so forth. Great, but the machine doesn't exist. Um, you know, you can have a great machine, but if it's faulty, what's the point? So I think uh, I hope you guys found this a little a little helpful. Um, I know a lot of people have questions about thirty frames or sixty frames. I didn't get too technical because um, I don't think it needs to be. Um, the average person does not need to know what you know these um all the technical side of things for them it's does it look good yes or no and i think there's pros and cons for both it's a matter of you know the developer seeing what he values more does he look does he value more the graphics or does he value more the actual physics of the game you know and it's not as if like you're falling from like you know an amazing top end PC game and then you're reverting it back to like you know ColecoVision graphics that's not the case at all yes there's a difference but I mean you have to put it in perspective as well so I think uh, to be honest people are complaining for nothing it'd be nice but hey 
And if the worst case scenario, play the PC game. If you can, if most of these guys have, or gals, have an Xbox One, chances are they have a PC version. And you have a PC version, chances are, or you have the PC. And if you have a PC, you can buy the PC version. So, so that's it for my talking points for this week. Uh, my review of the week is um, um, an old game. It's a retro review uh, called Ken Houston's Blackjack Poker. Um, so this is uh, for the ColecoVision. Um, it's one of the game's first games that I actually played on the game, uh, on, on the console. Um, I believe, and I may be wrong slightly, but I think it was the second game we, we had after the Donkey Kong packaged game. Um, obviously, it was my brother. He was older. Um, we, I think we got this as a gift for Christmas. And this is before online casinos. Yay! Um, I actually always liked this game um, just for the the music, the f uh, facial... Um, the facial uh, uh, gestures or the, you know, the, the, the faces that the, the character does. Um, it was pretty, you know, for back then, it was pretty good graphics. Um, you also had the ColecoVision insert, so you had, like, the controller, and the controller had a keypad, and you could put an insert so you would know when to hit, when to stand, when to double, split, help, whatever. Um, very simple. Um, because it's not linked to online play, you got to choose how many, how much money did you want to start with. Um, I think the maximum you can start with is uh, 99,999. And then you play. Uh, you can play both blackjack and poker. Um, and that's it. And then you just go through the games and, and, and hit and stand and whatever. Um, I, I truly enjoyed it. I always enjoyed it. Um, I played it recently. Um, it's a catchy tune. Um on the game I, it always sticks to my head it's like an earworm um it never gets out of my head but i i do enjoy it uh, it's one of the lesser less annoying songs on the on the ColecoVision. so you can actually see the full review on aroundtable.ca uh ken houston's blackjack poker for the ColecoVision. that's it for me this week thanks guys for joining me hope that you you like the show uh you can uh let me know what you think of the full show uh, at my Corporate Gamer Facebook page, at Corporate Gamer. Uh, on Twitter, Corporate Gamer 9. You can watch my videos, uh, my podcast as well. Uh, you can, well, watch. It's the audio, it's the, the YouTube version, so there's a splash page. Uh, at Corporate Gamer on YouTube. Um, you can also listen to me on iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, uh, TuneIn Radio, and uh, Stitchers. So you have all those possibilities. Whatever platform is better for you, go for it. Subscribe. And I hope you guys have a great week. All right? Keep on playing.